Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 390. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions uh, asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, he's also a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business uh, community. Wasserweb.net. Um, Masataki resides in Wimbledon, um, uh, close to the centre of London. And... Um, He's also a Google product expert in the AdSense community. And David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He's based uh, in West Sussex. Um, he's, um, um, it, is, it is West Sussex, isn't it? Yep. And it is. Yes. <laughs> Got the dog going. Um, and uh, uh, David can be found at davidrosam.com. All right, our first question uh, is, uh, uh, no, it's titled No Index and Potentially No Follow on um, uh, Category Pages. Andy Trigg uh, posted it. He said, I want to make proper pages for all of my WordPress categories so that users can see a properly designed page with links to all articles in a category presented in order of importance and usefulness instead of the default big block style list in date order. I have categories set to no index and um, potentially no follow so that all of the articles are followed and indexed uh, from the uh, um, pages created. Uh, is this a good idea or a bad idea? Um, I, for the point of view of lots of messing about, I would say it was a bad idea. Um, I think unless I could um, find a plugin to work out the the order. Um, the last thing I would want to do is is to manually sort out which order these uh, these article summaries should be in. Um, frankly, I've got better things to do. Um, but if you <laughs> want to do it, I'm sure there's no law against it. Um, if I'm understanding what it is that you're trying to do, Andy, I, I know having a uh, sorry, there's I, you're probably hearing a load of dog carnage going on behind me, um, but uh, um, that will go down hopefully soon. Um, yeah, there's there's some toings and froing in the uh, in the community answers, which I think I should probably read before I dig myself into a hole. Um, so. Uh, depends. Depends. To see a mess you're on. Um, uh, uh, no indexing. Yeah, no indexing. A now we are talking about categories for articles, right? I just hopefully that's correct. Um, but no indexing it won't actually affect the um search engines from finding those articles that are selected to be in that category <coughs> um so that's definitely not a problem they will certainly find them um typically search engines once an article has been published um you know search engines will find it via uh, your sitemap and search console um, they will typically find those anyway without actually going through the category every time. So, in all honesty, 
I don't think it's going to be a massive issue. And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm working through a site at the minute. Um, and it's taking a bit of time. They're on a tiny budget. So obviously I'm not going through the whole thing all at once because, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but they've got oh, about 2,000 articles roughly sitting in the uncategorized, you know, that stupid uncategorized WordPress category. And someone at some point, which, you know, you should do is, was no index that uncategorized thing. Um, and all of it's working fine. Obviously I'm working through the internal structure now, you know, internal linking, and I'm then now assigning them to proper categories. But in, in uh, you know, but the reason that is because, so there is no actual issue with the articles being found. Um, and, you know, to be honest, sometimes a category, depending on what kind of niche you're in, you know, your category may never be found if it's like a real competitive niche, you know, and there's 500,000 other people that are in the same kind of genre have got the same kind of category. Your category page ne may never appear. But, um, yeah, the actual no indexing of it shouldn't cause like a massive issue. But I wouldn't, you know, like, I wouldn't, you know, I would still have it indexed, but I, I'm, cer I'm certain, I'm 100% certain that your articles, it, it, it won't affect, you know, the, as such. But, um, but it just makes sense, you know, if you want to share it on social, hey, you know, yeah, check out the, this, these volume of articles or, <sighs> If you want to reference something, you can always reference it in a in the thing. You know, just give it a category link and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, I don't think it's a big issue, but certainly think of from a user's point of view. Cool. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, David. All right, let's wrap this one, and we'll move on to number two. Now, this one is from Nathan Bradshaw. It's uh, titled Finding Keywords That Are Valuable to Create Linkable Content. And Nathan said, uh, hello all, your valuable suggestions would be highly appreciated. Um, he said, I'm trying to rank my client's website. I need your help in keyword research. Um, the industry in which I'm working right now is uh, highly saturated. Um, this is a service-based software for doctors who use this to keep patient records. There are only eight to ten service slash product keywords uh, which have over uh, 700 um, slash month searches, which are being occupied by industry giants slash leaders and third-party websites. Uh, brackets, government, business listing, medical journals, in brackets. So he said, please, I need your help to find keywords that are valuable to create linkable content, uh, of course, uh, there. Um, oh, of course, there would be education and sales pitch as well. I tried to use Ahrefs and uh, Keyword Planner, couldn't find any, any different which I use specifically for a new page. Please help if we can talk via a message. Um, I'd, I'd just like to point out that uh, requesting a, a, a private message is not what we prefer on WSEO questions, we, because you, you asking for um a private message sends that the, re the response underground and there's probably two or three people reading the, your question that uh, um would rather anyway so the big the big issue i've got here nathan is that you're relying on a tool 
to tell you what kind of keywords to create content for a client. Now, because this is, you know, there's a small amount there, et cetera, et cetera, you're, you're stuck in this, like, this loop. I think the big issue here is that you don't understand what your client does because your client should be able to tell you all sorts of different things, um, who's phoning, who's inquiring, what are they inquiring about, what do they offer, have you looked at their sales decks, have you looked at their sales pitches, have you looked at any company information that they've ever done any talks on, have you looked at any quotations that they've ever sent out to, to, to businesses or clients. That is where you're going to find all the ideas on this. Um, if these are doctors, etc., like I, I, it's still very vague saying they provide some kind of service thing. So it's very vague for us to even like look at it. I mean, but essentially, if you're competing, you know, against these kind of things, you, you need you need to find out what they can what they can provide, what they can service who their target audience is, and then start um, creating the content around that. And yeah, sometimes, look, so, you know, even basic things like, um, I don't know, uh, even a chiropractor, for example, you chuck in stuff around the site and things like this, keyword tools aren't going to sometimes, you know, keyword tools aren't going to always target what people are looking for especially by different variations of countries and things like this, um, you need to actually be speaking to your client. Um, and, and, and that's one of the biggest things um, to understand what, what, you know, what the biggest things are about. Um, I'll give you uh, a, an example. Um, it's not on, it's not on, the, like I, I have a vascular surgeon's um uh, as a client <coughs> but in one of our regular catch-ups and where I you know ask relevant questions and in in one of our um, spreadsheets where he sends back to me monthly or rather just updates it's a Google Doc with questions and things uh, there was this thing on here on hydro well oh, I can't even pronounce it but basically it's excessive excessive sweating now that generally doesn't fall in and would never fall under any keyword research for vascular issues. Um, but he treats this specific thing, excessive sweating. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of, um, you know, n not a lot of call for it. I think only like, you know, one in 10,000 people may suffer from it. So it's very, very niche, very specific. But I was like, whoa, -ho, what's this? And then it's a quick phone call, find out what it is. Right, now we've got new, new stuff around and we can build things out. We can start asking questions, answering questions, et cetera, et cetera, around this topic. Um, so I really think that if you're in a situation where you can't, you know, keyword tools just keep regurgitating the same stuff, uh, you need to be talking to your client and getting some ideas in terms of what they do, um, white papers they may have published, sales pitches, sales decks, uh, you know, you've got, to, you've got to dive in and get the stuff direct from the company and look at it. And then you can start actually, once you start getting a little bit of better insight into these, into, in, in, into their, what, what the business model is, who they've pitched before, uh, sales, telephone, telephone uh, um, conversations, the sales team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you start getting a bigger, broader, and more valuable insight on what you should be, what you could be, and how you could be targeting um, their, you, you know, their actual users better. Thank you, Tim. Any more? Okay, right, let's go to our next. Um, this one, question number three on our run list, it's from Chris Green. Um, it's titled Index Page with No Content. Um, Chris said, hey guys, we just created a new category on e an e-commerce store and have not yet added any products or content yet, but it's indexable. 
indexable on what? Um, he said, should we set a no index tag until the category is filled with products and content? Otherwise, Google will scan the page and see nothing, which may hurt uh, its future performance. Uh, your thoughts? I don't think this is going to cause you any problems. Um, let's consider it's an e-commerce store. It's likely to have um, it's likely to have lots of pages because that's the the, the nature of e-commerce stores. Um, so I'll make that uh, make that assumption. Um, you'll know your your um, uh, your new category is likely to be one of many. Um, your site is perhaps not going to be um, spidered um, while it's sitting there empty because you're soon going to put products and content in it. Um, I wouldn't worry, although if you want to know, index it and then remember to um, to remove the no indexing because how many times has that happened um particularly with a wordpress site while you're uh, you're setting the thing up um yes uh i i don't think it's anything to worry about um whichever way you go um yeah excellent david any more yeah so <laughs> I mean, it all depends on what you're doing with it, really. You know, to be to to, to be fair, um, you know, we have some like e-com sites that, of course, there's only Christmas products for four months of the year, um, but we typically don't know index it after that. It stays live, and we just remove the body copy. We just remove the actual products off the page and replace it with a, you know, we we replace it with what we think is trending for the following year, just some ideas. Uh, we also put a little poll on there, you know, if people land on it, that they can guess what the next trend is, makes it a bit more interesting. And also then there's a newsletter sign up to, you know, sign up and we will ping you a message when our new Christmas products hit the hit the store so it's entirely up to you what you want to do but just remember that just because it's a new category page and stuff's not quite ready it doesn't mean you can't use that page build a bit of hype people land on it you know what you're doing um because if you've got a campaign coming you know you've got to get someone out there so it doesn't yeah like it's, it's it's look i don't think it's going to hurt and you can certainly just don't have to think about it that a category page is just for product on man you can do so much more with it so so there's some thoughts any more moving right along we're uh, on number four on our run list um and joshua well said i have a question for citations uh joshua went on to say hey there i have a question for citations for my business address in the search results uh, of google um street is abbreviated to st but in the back end of google google my business for the address in address under info uh, street is spelled out so which way do i reference it in the citations and uh, directory listings that, that i create uh, the way it appears in the search results when I search a keyword or, or the way it is in the, the back end of Google My Business, how much uh, does uh, uh, it matter? It, it doesn't really matter. Google's clever enough to understand streets and streets, uh, road and road. Um, limited with a not a limited company, you know, uh, there's so many nuances to it, and, and those are pretty basic stuff that, that Google kind of understands. Um, what I typically would do is, yeah, I know Google does a lot of this 
stuff and <laughs> some other countries it even changes the freaking language uh of 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 the of the you know of the of the location um what i would do is just stick to it locally on what your post office referred to at. Um, if your post office actually refers to your address as street, S-T-R-W-T, and S-T, uh, that's how I'd refer to it. I would defer to the actual post office uh, on, on how they refer to that street, because not all, all are the same. Um, and then I would defer to that and stick to that and let Google figure out the rest. They understand the difference between street and street. So I'm more concerned about your actual users. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any more? Okay, on our run list number five is Marie Assar. Um, the title is, does content around 500 words um, work for SEO? Uh, Marie said, is there any case where the content that is around 500 words works for SEO? I'm trying to write some product pages and I'm having a hard time getting the word count up. Um, I don't think you should be thinking in terms of, of word count. Um, there used to be this thing about a blog post has to be at least 300 words. Um, and you've, you know, is there any case where content that is around 500 words works for? Well, there is a case. There are cases where content that is around 500 words works for SEO. They depend upon the competition. They depend upon the topic. Um, those kind of things. So yes, but it depends what you're writing about and what the competition is for those topics. Um, if you're struggling to write words, that, that number of words, then um, and you feel that that 500 words is not going to be enough because your competitors are writing a thousand words say then you need to have a good look at what your what your competitors have written about that um, you know you you don't you don't um, you don't uh, I'm not saying you copy what they say but you can borrow the ideas you can borrow the approach um, but just make sure you do it better than they, they do. Otherwise, you're just going to be doing what they're doing to the same sort of standard that they, they're doing it. Um, but try not to did, worry about did she, them. Sorry. Did, she, did she say product copy? Oh, product page, I mean, yes. I mean, Jesus wept, love. Uh, like, what is this product? I mean, I don't want to read a freaking story about, uh, you know, a flipping cover for my for my phone i mean like why am i right why are you writing an essay for a for a product well like, it's what the product is doesn't it you know i could write yeah, a, yeah. i could write 500 words about a car yeah 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 for sure like uh, yeah okay this certainly depends on what it is but wow you know i mean i'm trying to think the last time that i saw a e-com site that wasn't performing that had like 500 freaking on a product i mean yeah mm. yeah well so yes that well spotted i i just went leaping in there and uh didn't notice the word product but yes this, this so what's happening here we perhaps uh marie is saying um the here's the here's the key phrase i'm gonna have to write 500 words on that key phrase but you know is is 500 words on a product page you know is that as, as tim says does that make sense should you be writing some other content that you can write 500 words easily or thousand words easily about you know how you use okay. it yeah, I'm so I'm just checking something, and I'm I'm quite interested how people are going 300 to 500, based on my experience. Okay, right here we go. I'm just looking on a client quickly. They sold 65,000 pounds of an aluminium chair, a double leg aluminium chair, last in the last quarter. A 
120 words to describe the product, and that's excluding the chair dimensions. Like, I, I, I'm really like, are we even having this like about a product? It's not the freaking word count on a product. Like, as Dave said, yes, if it's some, something intricate, if it's something that, you know, like, yeah, for sure. And if I'm sp spending, like, if I'm spending 150,000 pounds on a, you know, a Patek Philippe watch, yeah, I, I certainly want to know the you know the the five engineers that actually handcrafted this thing i want to know you know the ages their sex life and all that sort of bollocks yeah because i'm pretentious and i'm spending 120 grand on a thing but if i'm going to sell ninety thousand pounds worth of aluminium chairs in the last three months with 120 words why the flip do i need to sit and scratch my head for the next six months trying to figure out another 450 words just to to get to this magic 500 word like it uh it it just doesn't sink in my brain i, I don't know why anyone's saying this uh, i'm sorry i don't yeah i think you know. that's, yeah that's the issue isn't it you know what purpose do the words serve and you know it's not the number that matters it's what it says and if if i'm looking for a chair i you know like tim said i don't want a whole story about the chair you know I want to know whether that that chair meets my requirements and my needs, and you know I don't want a thousand word essay on how on a sunny day it could be put out in a nice garden and so on and so forth. No, I don't care about that, you know. But suppose it was this the same the very same chair or the very same pattern of chair that Ernest Hemingway preferred when he wrote the old man and the sea or something um well that's what you yeah that's what you get if you go to an antique shop or yeah, one of those you know yeah, um, you know uh, you get you get the same chair chair shop. around yeah. but no I, i'm i'm just saying that there are there are ways that you you can make <clears throat> certain product and, it, and it's totally like 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 and I, and I agree and it's the type of product mm. that kind of will dictate but not necessarily for a search point of view or seo point of view that is for the user for the user's point of view on the, the on their expectation of that product yeah and i think people are very good at seeing the padding you know when yeah there are meaningless words you know, when 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 there are meaning word salads being tossed around people see it through yeah, you know. totally and you you know what the, the funniest thing is um you know the uh seo community have been going on about recipes for ages because you can no longer find the recipe and and it i was kind of like chuckling ha 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 until last night where someone had mentioned uh bul bulgog bulgogi sauce and i was like because me as as you know from the old kitchen i was like okay i want to know how to make this like i want to know what someone's talking about i'm not going to buy a pack and i want to know what the my sweet mother of god trying to find a recipe where i didn't have to scroll down 47 freaking pages riddled with ads to find the actual recipe then i had to eventually click on another box to say reveal recipe I was like, Jesus wept, holy mother of God. And that is what you definitely don't want your clients doing who are looking for a product. You know, so but I, I don't think it's from SEO perspective. I think it's from your user perspective, Marie. I really do. If somebody spent here spending like, you know, 120 grand on some, you know, watch a chair or a car, um, uh, versus a, you know, a, a, a 20 quid phone case, you know, there, there's a different level of expectation. And I really don't think it is from, you know, the amount of words you chuck on it. Um, because if it was, uh, this business that I work with, well, they wouldn't be selling chairs and I'd, cause I'd still be scratching heads writing for me first one.
Sorry, Tim, I, I muted myself. I couldn't figure out how to get it off. It's all right, Jim. It's all right, mate. We like it when you mute yourself, Jim. Yeah, yeah. This is not our first radio, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Moving right along. Um, this is from Bowser NXF. What does NXF mean? Um, it's titled Content or User Experience. And uh, Bowser said, would you say content or user experience while on the content? Which beats the other for SEO? Uh, I can't figure that one out. Mm. Well, <laughs> your user experience is how you're going to enter a site and how that user is essentially going to navigate through what they need to find and how to perform a certain task, whatever that site is, is, is you know, designed for, whether it be a sale, whether it be a sign up, whether it be a, just a hit the freaking phone button or whatever the case may be, a quote or whatever. If you can, like, if you can essentially, now, of course, it's become more, more intricate getting that user from, you know, as things have evolved, as users have evolved, people, you know, as we've learned, people don't just, like, type that last keyword and there you appear and then automatically, then they need to, you know, find out we need to target them and we need to appear in the sales funnel and therefore we're creating content. However, your content, uh, and, and I think it was just, is almost going back to the same, the same, you know, question before it's, it's the, 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 the expectation or the level of expectation that your user or, you know, that you satisfy their purchase query on, on, on what they want to do to move through to the next thing, or, you know, have you provided enough information to satisfy their purchasing desire so that they're going to hit that purchase button or they're going to hit the contact button or they're going to re request a quote. Um, and it works hand in hand. Equally, a terrible user experience where you have a parallax site where you've just like literally shoved 10,000 words on a freaking page and you know uh, that can equally be as bad so i don't think it's one or the other i honestly don't believe it's one or the other yeah i think it's no i don't think it's one or the other either oh sorry no, no, you go ahead. no you go ahead huh? you want me to go okay i'll go um yeah it's it's, it's not one or the other this is this is the, the, the thing you need to remember about SEO, digital marketing, whatever you want to call it, what we do, what we do with websites, is that there's not one thing that does, does the trick. You've got to do all these things. You've got to have content. You've got to have images. You've got to have branding. You've got to have user experience. You've got to have this. You've got to have that. Um, and the more of these things you do well, the better chance you have out there in the game. Um, and yeah, I think Tim said perfectly, it depends which way you, are, you, you come at this. Yes, good content will get people to your website, but if you haven't got a good experience, they ain't gonna stay there. So your bounce rate will be high. But if you have a wonderful user experience and you don't put any content on it, to speak of, or not good enough quality of content, there'd be no one there to have that user, you want user experience. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it actually just popped into mind the other day. Um, I had asked, uh, I'd asked a couple of people on, on a particular, on, on, a, on um, which product they use for this particular task. And I think two or three people came back and sent me a link to this. Um, we use this go onto the site, landed on. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't 
very well created. It was a bit like rough around the edges. But of course, you know, three or four people have mentioned this. And so, you, you know, you've already put that trust there. And I'm scrolling down and reading it. What they're saying is making complete sense. And then it gets a little bit long. And then I'm like, Jesus, these guys are waffling a bit. And I'm like, okay, there's no no check price uh, in the top nav. Uh, I can't see it there. So I'm scrolling down. Then I eventually I'm like, oh, Jesus, wet. I eventually actually skipped like a massive chunk of the last bit of piece on the page to go and check if it was in the footer. It wasn't in the footer. Uh, freaking go back up again to try and find. I want to know what the price is here. I'm not going to just, you, you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to. Hit buy now. I want to see the price. And true God, I don't know, but I couldn't find it. And I've binned it. I binned it after 10 minutes of looking. I'm like, well, I don't know. These three or four people who like recommended to me, I'm like, like, well, I don't know how you found the prices, but I'm not signing up to something. I, I can't check the prices on. And so in that instance, content was all there. If a little overinflated and over padded, totally. Um, but the one thing I really wanted was to check the prices. So bad user experience. I couldn't, I literally couldn't find it. And, you know, there were, if their prices had been okay, there was a guaranteed sale in. There was a word of three people that recommended it to me. It would have been a guaranteed sale if, if the prices were okay. Um, and I couldn't find it. And I binned it out. So, yeah, you know, both work. Both are really important to get right. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny to say that the self same thing happened to me two days ago. Um, wasn't well, not from the point of people recommending it, but you know, a, a product that uh, I'd heard about on forums and stuff. I went to the website, no price, and I think. There's no price. If it's too, um, if I have to ask the price, it's too expensive. They're hiding it for a reason. I'm not hanging around. You know what? I've got this one client actually, and they are they are e-commerce in that sense, but they are they are kind of like business to large trade. So it's like massive commercial installations of sinks, um, stuff like this. And they have steadfastly resisted me saying, just, just get your prices on. And they have steadfastly, and the thing is for them, they're like, well, we actually sell 10 units. We, we sell in units of 10, which makes it cheaper, even when you, even if you like to have the single price, it makes it cheaper. And 99% of our people always purchase in tens or multiples of tens because they are doing bulk, they're bulk contractors, you know. And I'm like, well, just put it on. And they're like, yeah, but you see, when people see the initial price, they're not going to look at it in the ten. And I'm like, well, put it in with the massive thing there that this is, you know, based upon a purchase of 10. And that's why it's so freaking cheap. People want to see the price, but you know, actually, they they sell a shit ton and you know it, it's funny you can't actually buy the product you have to then go through to the purchase product thing and check in your products and da -da -da -da, and uh, so you can't actually purchase online it's all done and then it's weird so you've spent all this on the on the thing but then it goes through to a sales rep who does your po and the invoice and all that like so it's weird like like to me i'm like i would want to see the price but in that sort of weird scenario, the industry is kind of used to not, you know, and they're used to just invoicing and purchase orders and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to order 100 lots of these. And so I guess it makes sense in that. But for me, like working on the site, I'm like, I want to see the price. Where's the price? Yeah, yeah I want to see the price too. I think most people want to see the price. And going back to your, your client, you know, what happens when – a competitor enters the marketplace and has all their uh, prices on the website. You know, if they look, if the prices look pretty good, people are going to go there. Yeah. They're not going to. Yeah. And what happens if they've created the proper system back end to deal with it? Like you could literally 
have your PO, invoice, all that sort of stuff manually entered on the checkout, then they're going to have a big problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, Master Taki, um, uh, we, we had something coming from you, but David kept jumping over the top of you. Oh, I've forgotten what I want. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Uh, no, I think. I think. No, I'm doing. No, no, I'm just agreeing with with um, David and Tim. And in a sense, it's a false dichotomy, false question, saying you know which is more important or which beats the other. You have to have both. You know, if your content is rubbish, however you polish it, a turd is a turd. And you know, if your content's gem. You know, it's really good. But if it looks like a turd, people are going to be turned away by that. So, you know, you need both. Yeah, and totally. And also what we need to remember is that SEO is not going to make a shit product a good product either. <laughs> Especially if it doesn't have a price on it. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, look at this number seven on our run list. It's a question sent to us from uh, Fernanda Herrera. Um, it's titled, Does the amount of photos in a page affect ranking? Um, Fernanda said, hi, guys. I was wondering, does the amount of photos uh, in a content page affect ranking? Does having more images improve ranking? No. No, no, no. It's it needs, you know, it's all based on the No, you don't even have to have images. I mean, like you look at so I've been I've been like sitting in um the medical space for a little bit over the last sort of year and a bit. Um which has been slapped heavily with this medic updates and all this kind of stuff, which is all about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the more you look at competitors, like 90% of the competitors are actually like medical journals um, and research papers. And there's no pictures in them. Like, I honestly don't, if you just have a header image because it's good for a user in terms of it's nice on the page, blah, 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 blah. And tells a little bit of story and I don't know somewhere in there you, you like you if you're talking about graphs and charts and you putting images of them because that makes sense that's perfectly fine but if actually depending on what the content is you know like no you don't have to have an image and like an image is not the be all and end all and it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna like you know if you don't have an image it's not going to affect you in that sense. In fact, I've actually recently started reducing, even in the travel travel space where it's a very visual thing, I've actually started reducing a lot of images in the thing because I found that when you've looked at heat maps that people like people get distracted when they start looking at images and they're not actually getting to the crux of it i'm like no mate scroll a little bit more down and hit that hit that inquire and reserve and book now button yeah and the more images we've been chucking in like over the years like really creating a nice story for them it was actually distra di distracting for them so yeah we start off with one or two now you know chuck one in there just to reinforce a point but we've actually i've actually i've like on a personally i've back a lot on using images um and this makes sense too so yeah i mean that's uh, yeah yeah the the um the images idea is, is is quite it's quite a good question really isn't it because this goes back to our content or user experience answers to some extent um does it help the user experience well having some nice images is good having too many uh 
um, images, it starts to be like the recipes that, that Tim was talking about. You've got to go through all these pictures before you find out where it is and how much it's going to cost and whether there's a two two bed bedroom um, available and all, all the things that you really want to know. You don't want a piece of generic people sitting on sitting by the side of a pool with a cocktail you know it doesn't matter whether that's in thailand or bali you know it's it's the same picture that you've seen umpteen times and there's 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 also the other thing how many websites do you come across tim let's say um that they've got images but they're not optimized they're just slowing the whole damn shooting match down and that's killing your seo you know google's been going on and on and on about uh, yeah. about uh, page speed, speed speech, whatever it is yeah. for years so don't you know if you're going to use images make sure that they are optimize the hell out of i've just lost a fight with a client and they want to put a video banner hmm. honest to god they're literally yes but we like this you know we're redesigning the whole thing and i'm like yes result we're going to redesign excellent um yes but we like this and i'm like no 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 Yes, but all our all our competitors do. I'm like, and that's why we're winning at the minute. <laughs> yeah, but I lost. I lost. Yeah, but I lost the fight, man. I lost the fight, and yeah, well, that's la vie, hey. It'll be your fault, Tim. Of course. <laughs> that's so true, isn't it? Uh, if they succeed, they did it all in their own. They fail. It's all your fault. All right, let's roll along to number seven on our run list. Um, is it seven that we're doing that? No, we've just done that one. Let me see. Um, we have covered image page optimization, haven't we? What? Yeah, I'm sure we have multiple times over the years. Yeah, no, I'm talking about on our run list. It's just that. Uh, um, I, I, it's possible I'm um, what do you think? anyway there we are it's thank you for watching thank you for <laughs> um, we'll be uh, back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again before I go I must thank people like Michael Marcinez and Brenda um, Brenda oh Goodness, I've forgotten her name. Damn it. Um, I'm sorry, Brenda, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it right next time. Um, yeah, the, the people that answer our uh, questions that turn up uh, each day uh, on uh, fa the Facebook group, Don't Miss Your Questions, um, uh, just perform an, an invaluable role. Um, as do um, the, the people I'm looking at right now, uh, Masataki Waso, uh, Tim Kappa, and David Razam. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, anyway, we'll be back at the same time next week. Um, but for now, it, it's um, good night. Um, maybe I'm pressing the wrong button here. Yeah, usually am. <laughs>